Hey everybody, it's Dalton. Um, I am going to go ahead and show you how I make my own plastic baits. Before I do that, my camera woman is my wife, and as of yesterday, 34 years we've been together. We've been together a long time, and yeah, I don't know how she did it. So let's talk about bait making. Uh, I am not a fancy bait maker, okay? You can get really in-depth with bait making. Number one, I don't like open pouring. I realized that as soon as I uh, ordered my first mold. I don't like it. I prefer to use an injector. Uh, number two, you, you know, sky's the limit on the colors you want. Uh, sometimes baits get bubbles in them. Bubbles don't bother me and it doesn't bother the fish. But if that's something that bothers you, you're going to have to get, uh, I call it a debubbler, but it's, it's just a degasser. It's some kind of little chamber that will remove those bubbles. So. We're going to start right off the bat just showing you some of the stuff that, that you're going to need okay you're going to need plastic you're going to need various colors i've got all kinds of colors and uh, glitters over here uh, today i'm going to do blue on blue which means i'm going to do just a straight blue this is non-bleed which means it won't bleed through the other colors and i'm going to use size 15 glitter okay i typically use size 15 or 35. I have my injector. I'll give you the link to this below. I have my Pyrex cup. I have my gloves that are rated up to 400 degrees to protect my hands from Kinko, whatever that is. Here's the lid to my injector, a couple of butter knives, and you got to get you some of these because that's for your glitter. So the first thing you're going to want to know is your plastics. I like dead on plastic. Okay. Dead on plastic is my favorite. I've used other ones. This one here is safer for uh, breathing. Uh, I, I can't remember what chemical is in the other ones, but they don't put it in this one, so supposedly it's safer. And this one here is the floating blend. I, I have two blends. I have a worm blend and a floating blend. When I do my worms, I actually go 50-50 with these because it gives more buoyancy. And then today, though, I'm gonna make some drop shot baits and some uh, some Ned Rig baits. So I want them to float, so I'm gonna use the floating, uh, the floating blend. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do, guys, I guarantee you, this is real important. You are gonna wanna shake this thing about 50, 60 times because you want your plastic to be ready. All right, so I got this all shook up. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour one cup of plastic. This is just how I do it. I like to uh, go one cup at a time. Now, on this microwave here, which was a whopping $40 at Walmart, I'm gonna set it for four minutes initially. The goal is to get this plastic to 350 to 360 degrees. If you don't maintain that temperature, it's not going to come out right. So I'll be right back. I'm going to get the molds out and we're going to talk about those. All right, guys, I got my molds out. This is my drop shot mold. I'll put the link below. I got this from Angling AI. This is my Ned Rig, bowl, uh, Ned Rig mold. I got that from uh, Epic Baits. So I'll show you real easy how I put these together. On this drop shot bait, Angling AI made it very, very convenient with these little nuts so you don't you don't have to tighten it real tight but you do have to have something tighten it up or it'll create what is called flashing and it starts coming out it's just terrible now this one right here doesn't have that so you guys are going to need to forgive my shaking hands it's cold out here today and i'm not wearing a jacket because it gets in the way of my bait making but at any rate i use these little clips that i picked up from i think harbor freight and I just hand tighten them. That's all I do. Just hand tighten them. I don't put a, I don't tighten them down that much, but just enough to where it's not going to be a problem. So these are ready and I'm still waiting for the plastic. I'll be back in a minute. All right, guys. So this has been four minutes. And the first thing I do is I take one of my butter knives and I stir this up and I can already tell it's not ready yet. The more you do this, the more you're going to know that it's not ready. Um, 
So it's only at 333 degrees right now. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go another 30 seconds. Then I'm going to stir it again. You always want to stir it first um, before you take the temperature. If you don't stir it first, it's not going to give you an accurate reading. All right, guys, I let it go another 30 seconds. I'm going to see where we're at here. And I can tell that we are at 359 degrees. So that'll work. I'm going to stir it real good. And now I'm going to show you guys what I do. So I use this stuff called uh, MF Plastic Color. I can tell you right now, this takes 40 drops, okay? That's how you measure your colorants. There's other colorants out there. I know Angling AI does them. To where 40 drops with this is like two to five drops of theirs. I just haven't bought those yet. So I'm going to run 40 drops. I don't know if that was 40, but it doesn't matter if it's over 40. It makes no difference. That's okay. And you're going to see how quickly that turns real nice blue right there this color I'm making has been a good one out at, out at Lake Nascimento with the spotted bass okay you have to play around with the glitters I'm gonna put quite a bit in this one I want to get a quite a bit of glitter in there because this is gonna be blue on blue so I'm gonna use the the full deal put this back I'm going to go ahead and stir this up, and all that glitter is going to get all stirred up in there. So like I say, this is real easy to do. I should be wearing my gloves right now, but I'm not. So I dipped down to 311 degrees, so we're going to put her in for 30 seconds, and I think I might be ready for the first pour. And that's when I'm going to put my, uh, my gloves on. All right, it's been... Uh, 30 seconds. I think we're getting real close here. Not quite though. It's always better on your heat to go a little over, but not a little under. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run about 20 seconds. And uh, the only thing I can tell you is that the heat is a very crucial part of this. If you don't have the right heat, it ain't going to work right, okay? Anybody can do this. This is as simple as can be. I do uh, this a little bit different as far as with my injector. I'll let that go for 20 seconds, and I can tell you right now, it's ready. So you're going to know that the more you do it, you don't have to use the thermometer as much. Here's where I do it different. A lot of guys put the cap on. They suck the plastic up. Probably the safer way to do it. I don't like doing it that way. I like to pour it in. Then I got one of these as a screw on. They have other ones that you can, it's kind of a locking deal. So I'm going to go ahead and push some of the air out. Come right up here. I'm going to slowly push this down. And I'm only going to use my hand as the weight. That's all the weight I'm going to put on this. I'm going to go about 10 seconds. That's usually about what I go. Just hold it on there. Okay. Lift it up. Fill the hole. Come down to the other one. Do the exact same thing. Hold it for about uh, 10 seconds. Just your hand as the weight. You don't want too much pressure. Okay. And then I'm just going to, this one here didn't come out right, so this is going to be a problem. The doggone plastic dried too fast. So I may not be able to do both molds at the same time. Because today's weather, you know, it's funny how weather affects the plastic. And what it does is it makes it kind of harder sometimes to do. And so I'm only going to be able to do one of these at a time. I'll open this up. It may be okay. I've thought these things were messed up before, but we'll see. All I know is this wouldn't push any more plastic out, which means it hardened faster because of the weather. The weather conditions make it harden a little bit quicker than I want it to. So I let this sit about a minute, minute and a half. 
Uh, let me show you guys something here. Again, I started making these jigs with my own colors. I took one of my chatterbaits, took its skirt off, and made a bluegill color. That's real cool. And then over here, guys, this is where I keep this is where I keep all my extra plastic and sprue. Okay, like this is baby bass right here, made with a floating material. I mark it. I can remelt this. Okay, you don't have to waste the plastic. You can reuse it. So let's go back over because I think we're pretty close to being ready here. And the first thing I do is I unscrew this thing. They make all kinds of different injectors. If you don't like this one, you can get whatever you want. And now I'm going to go ahead and pull my gloves off because it just makes it a little bit easier. Get some of this off there. And just, there we go. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna pull these off. And there's your drop shots right there. So you pull these out, okay? Pull these out and I just rip them all off at the same time and I throw them on a pan. I take this, put it back in there and then I cover this back up again, getting ready for the next round. Let's see if the other one made it. I don't think it did, but if it did, fine. So we'll pull these off right here. We'll open this up and lo and behold, it didn't make it. Look at that. That's awful. It all gets remelted. Okay. So you've seen how this one works. Now we're going to do this one. I'm going to have to do it solo. I can't keep the plastic hot enough, long enough, or I could make it hotter. Let's try that. I'm going to make it hotter. I'll be back. All right, guys, so I'm, I'm heating this up a little bit more. I guess it has to do with the moisture in the air. Somebody who knows more about this stuff could explain that. Um, where I learned how to make these baits is a guy on YouTube... That's all he does is make baits. It's called the World's Worst Fisherman. That's what he calls his channel. And he makes some phenomenal hand poured baits as well as injecting. And I, I learned this stuff from him, although he doesn't uh, pick it up and, and pour it in the injector like I do. He does it the other way. And uh, <laughs> I learned this from, uh, from Scroggins. He's a, He's a pro fisherman, and I saw him doing this one time, and I just started pouring it this way. It's a little less messy. I like it a little bit better. So let's see if we can get them both again with this thing being a little bit hotter. Maybe, uh, maybe five seconds at a time instead of ten. That way it doesn't harden up too quick. Go ahead and there we go. That's nice. That's not hardened up now. So this should work really good. Now down there, give it a good five, six seconds. And this time I got it. So the key was I just had to heat it up more. I got it up to about 370 degrees out here in my, in my garage with, with kind of a lot of moisture in the air. So we're going to go ahead and let that set. Like I say, usually about a minute, minute and a half. It sets pretty fast. We'll come back, look at it, and we'll wrap up the video because that's how I do all of my molds, regardless of whether it's these two or any of the other ones that I have. I don't change the process. The process is going to be the same. It's what I like and, uh, and it works for me. All right, guys, it's been about, about a minute. Do the same thing here. Don't touch this without your gloves on. <laughs> I did that once. That's why I only did it once. That sucker is hot. All right, so let's go ahead and see if we got them both. I'm pretty confident with this pour on that uh, second mold. Feels pretty good. Let's take a little bit of that off. All right. Let's go ahead and pull these off here. Open up this mold. And there you go. There's some nice drop shot baits. Okay. These are flat sided worms for drop shotting. And, um, this is going to be the last round I do on the video because it's all going to be the same. That way the video is not quite as long, but I'm going to do one more round after this. Then I keep that plastic for when I need to make more of these. 
I've got that plastic ready and I can add a little bit more from the uh, from the jug and like I say I'll put all the links below yep these came out just right okay these are my uh, little Ned rigs and um, that is really it I'll be right back so I will put the links below angling AI um, epic baits epic bait molds these are a couple of my favorite companies but lure works um, spike it I think it's called spike it they have all kinds of uh, different molds and I'll put some links down below because what I started out with was a kit I bought a kit uh, my first mold was a five inch Sanko I don't like that mold but I didn't know what I was doing if I if I were to make more Sankos if I made a bunch of them I'd get me a different mold but I can work with that mold because I figured it out not all molds are, are, are the same. I like the CNC molds. They're, they're the best for me. Uh, for me, they're better than the just straight, I, I think it's just aluminum uh, molds, but you can do your own research and figure it out. I'm not really uh, fancy about this. I just make baits that I can fish with. I've had some guys buy some of the baits from me. This is not a bait making business though. There's no money in bait making unless you're really big. I've given away more of these baits than I've actually sold, but here you go guys, here's a few of them right here. Drop shot, Ned Riggs, blue on blue. It's been a good color out at Lake Nascimento. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if there's any more topics you want me to cover, go ahead and uh, uh, give me a comment. And if there's anything more you want me to, I'm about as detailed as I know how to be on this, but if I've missed something, let me know. If you do it a different way and it's better than my way, let me know. I'm more than willing to learn. I've only been doing this about a year. I'm no expert at it at all, but it's fun to catch fish with your own baits. It really is. We appreciate you all. If you haven't subbed, we appreciate it if you would. My wife says hi, and I say we'll talk to you next time.